Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing Murph, which is a new game from Osprey Games where we will be doing all sorts of trading, caravanning, cameling to try and get some delicious euro -y points. I am playing a solo game of this today, but it does simulate the two-player game where you each play as normal and then you have an extra dummy player that fills up some of the slots in the center. This is essentially that, but we have a deck of solo cards determining what the AI player is gonna do instead of a second player. But you should get an idea of the game no matter what player count you're aiming for. There is a static camera and a handheld camera. You can switch between them depending on whether you like things close and wobbly or further and still. And uh, what else do I need to tell you about? Uh, turn on your subtitles to the Klingon channel. If I've made any mistakes, they'll be corrected there. And if you'd like to help me keep making playthroughs, then I do have a Patreon linked in the description. Massive thanks to everyone that helps out there because it does genuinely keep them coming. So in this game, we are going to be taking turns on this central track here. This determines the four rounds of each of the years. There are only three years in the game, so that's 12 altogether, isn't it? So whoever is in front is going to get to go first in this round. And on your turn, you will take your master meeple, put it in one of the slots, and you will choose one of the buildings in that row to activate. Row means row or column, because it depends which round that you're in, but it's, it's the same either way. And in the solo game, we have the corrupt magistrate, which is basically the AI player. They will be going first in this first round. I am red. I'm going to be going second. And finally, we have the dummy player that's from the two-player game, the High Courtier, who will be going third. So first of all, we're going to be seeing the AI turn, the Corrupt Magistrate. For that, we need to draw a solo card from its deck, and the deck is made up of six cards, which is basically the six actions of the game. And from this deck, they're going to be repeating four of those cards to show how you will... You won't focus on everything in the game, of course, you will... You know, laser focus on a particular set of things. So the first thing that the corrupt magistrate is going to do, he's going to come to the marketplace. First of all, he needs to pick one of these action slots. He will pick one with the action that he wants to take in. So you see each of these buildings here, this is randomly generated. The, the camel tile is always in the middle, but it is double-sided, so it can be different uh, depending on what comes out. And then it's the same buildings, but they are just randomly shuffled and laid out here. So he wants a row that has got the marketplace in it. And there's four tiles, so one, two, three, four. So from that, he's got a little flow chart that he will pick things from from there. He will pick the row with the most of his buildings in, all even. It's at the start of the game. All this he will just uh, run through. Then he will pick the most with uh, the, the most high courtier buildings in, and then the most of your buildings in. And then if there's still a tie, he picks the row furthest from the queue, which is where we're going to determine uh, the turn order next time. Now, this doesn't mean that he is going to go last. Uh, we will see this happen at the end of the actual round. But what, what's going to happen is in kind of reverse order, the further you are away, you get first pick of where you're going to go next round. So by default, he would go third, but he can pay a camel for each space that he wants to move forward in turn order. And so potentially, if he has camels, he could be first next round. So he's going to go there, and he pops one of his buildings over here in the marketplace. So the marketplace is over here. This works a bit differently, of course, if you are coming here as an actual player. But in terms of the magistrate, it's going to establish a trading post. First of all, in one of the outer cities, if it can. You have to start in one of the inner cities, and then once so once you're in Samarkand here, you could go to Kashgar next time. You could establish a trading post there, but you've got to start in one of the inner cities first. So he's going to have to start here, and his priority is first northwest, and then clockwise from there if uh, if he's already in here. So he's going to establish a trading post, grab one of his discs to go in there. Uh, if you're the first player to establish a trading post in one of these inner cities, you get a camel that can be useful for all sorts of things, not just the jumping the queue in turn order. Then he gains a common good for all of his inner city trading posts and a rare good for each of his outer city trading posts. So in this case, it's just going to be a lovely orange. That'll keep him going for a turn or two. And then he will try and fulfill contracts. The contracts are out here. And let's take a moment to appreciate the beautiful art and design by Ian O'Toole. Uh, the contracts are over here. Again, he gets to skip some of the requirements. There's, there's an influence requirement to be able to fulfill certain tasks. You have to be along this track a little bit. 
magistrate doesn't care about that. He's corrupt, of course. But if he can fulfill the conditions of these contracts, so you want a combination of scrolls and goods. So you can see from the color which type of good it doesn't, it's not a particular one that you need. Uh, it's the, the rarity that's determined. There are some contracts that only want goods, but it's three goods if you're not going to give him any scrolls. So he can't fulfill anything. Normally he would fulfill a contract at this point if he could. And so that's the end of it. He only did the action once because there is only one building in the row that he chose. The AR player will get to go more times if he's allowed to keep going in those rows. Now, I wouldn't mind doing that, but I think let's, let's show you a different action. Eh? So I think I'm going to try and go up the mosque track a little bit. So I am going to I'm going to choose this row. So looking at the, the mosque action, it's in here twice. It's here and it's here. So I'm just going to choose, let's choose further along. Let's try and get the, the, the choice of uh, going here without having to pay camels. So I put a building on here and it's worth noting that in the, in the multiplayer game, this is a very interactive thing because there is all sorts of interplay between your own buildings and other people's buildings. So the way it works is, and it's going to work this way in the solo game. So I put my building here and I'm going to get an orange cube in the future. So say I come around here next round and I put a building over here, I'll get an orange and a teal cube. So I'll activate all of my buildings in terms of getting resources. I'll still only activate the, the building that I just picked. But what can also happen is in the multiplayer game, someone else could swing around here first and choose to activate my buildings. They would get all the resources of the red buildings and I would just get the resource on the one they actually activated. So there's a nice little interplay between how much can you build up in one row, but if you build up too much, someone else will just choose that for you. Uh, but yeah, that isn't in the solo game because you are never allowed to choose the magistrate's building and the magistrate will never choose your building. But there is the high courtiers buildings that are uh, all to play for. So coming to the mosque, you can advance up the mosque track as many times as you can afford. And you can see the cubes between the columns here. We start out with four different columns that converge into two, that converge into one, finally. Uh, and they will start rewarding you with bonuses as you get to certain sections. This replaces what a building generates with a white cube that's a wild card. This lets a building generate an additional cube. This will give you points during scoring. Uh, but for now, I only have an orange cube, so I'm spending it so that I can go up this mosque track and I am going to pay the orange there. I grab the camel because it's still there and that's it from me. Next we have the high courtier. So how this works is the player who went first chooses which row he's gonna go in and the player that went second chooses the actual building in that row that the courtier is gonna build in. That's all the courtier does, just puts a building down. Isn't gonna take any actions or anything like that. So first of all, it tries to pick the row that you've got the most buildings in then the, bit, the row that he's got the most buildings in, and then finally, the one closest to the queue. So, what that means is he's going to go in here and I choose where he's going to build. And so maybe, now I will say, a bit rubbish, it's uh, kind of, well, the strategy in general, but uh, yeah, at knowing where in particular would be great to go here. Now, I would kind of like to leave my row as open as possible. I wouldn't like it to go there to block that off because I would like to put as much stuff in here as possible so that when I come over here for these rounds, I could activate all of my buildings and get a load of resources in one big go. And it would be nice to stop the bot getting as much as possible by, uh, by putting it in there because that doesn't affect my column or the row that I've started in. And you'll do more later. You're not just going to concentrate on this one thing. But I think that's what I'm going to go for. So it doesn't do anything at all. Just, uh, just puts that building down there and does nothing with it. So now we have the round end. And so the person furthest from the queue goes first. They will go in third place next round, but the magistrate and the courtier will always pay if they have camels. So the magistrate does have a camel. So he is going to pay that camel to move to second place in the turn order. So now it comes to me and I do have a camel. So what I could do is pay that one camel and go first, which maybe I want to do to make sure, because otherwise I'm going last. I will get another camel, which is great for like the camel market here. If I chose this row, you can spend camels to take these extra bonus actions to get extra resources and favor and stuff. So that's a thought. 
I've, I was thinking of building more in here, but maybe I do want camels. So it's basically either either myself or the courtier is going to end up with two camels. So do I want to go last? Because I could still build up for a future round. I think yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take the camels. I'm not gonna have placed one, and I'll take the one that the magistrate put in. So there is uh, no choice of where the courtier is going. So the magistrate chooses which row he goes in. He will choose the row that I have the most buildings in. So it will be that one. And then I choose which building uh, he's actually going to build. And I will choose the one to block off his row a little bit. It is blocking my row here. I know it's a bit confusing to call him all rows, but it's, it's simpler in another way. So that's where he's going to go. Then it's the magistrate's turn. So this card is gone and done with. But we know for future rounds that he's going to be concentrating on that marketplace. Next up is the palace. So first of all, we need to choose an action row. Can he choose an empty building of the desired type? I would imagine so, since nobody's deliberately done it. Maybe the courtier's gone in one, but no, he hasn't actually. So available rows. So there's two in there. There's one there. There's one there. So he'll try and choose the row with the most of his buildings. He hasn't got a building in a row with that uh, action in it. He'll try and choose the one with the most courtier buildings. He can't because he put the courtier there. And so he will go for the one that is furthest back, which is over here. And he will try and put the building in a row with the most of his buildings in it. So he will go there, which does mean that next round, if he's allowed to go there, he will get to do whichever action he's picking <laughs> at, least, uh, at least twice. Although he'll put another building in there. That would be three times. Oh, no. So he's only going to get to do this once because the active row is this one. So he gets one action in here, and he is going to place one of his meeples in one of these sections of the palace that, during scoring, is going to earn him points based on things that he's done. So this would give you points for scrolls. He hasn't got any. Points for caravan cards. He hasn't got any. Points for goods. He has got a good. And then points for the mosque track. So he is, of course, going to go in the one that earns him the most points, and the first player in each of the sections gets one favor. So he slides up the favor track there. If you ever go on these spaces with points above them, you get those points. And if you get all the way along, you start moving up the influence track instead. Didn't quite show that, did I? <laughs> Thought that was going to be really sleek, but didn't quite manage it. I think I am going to go in the row with the camel market, because if I choose this action that I'm not particularly bothered about, then I can go to the camel market and I'm, I'm building up uh, buildings in this row. Although I could stick one over there just to kind of block off the magistrate a bit. Hmm, that's tempting. And I could go to the caravansary then. Maybe I'll do that. Yeah, I'm going I'm to go over here. So I can do the camel market before or after my action. So let's have a look at what's on this particular side of the camel market. So there's get a favor, which we've seen. There is get a white cube, which is just wild, can be used as any color. Get a scroll. Now scrolls are used to earn you breakthroughs when you get to two, four, six, and eight scrolls. You can get a nice bonus tile, but that, it would just be one, so it wouldn't get me that yet. Uh, and they're also used for fulfilling these contracts. You need a certain number of scrolls, so it would start me on my way for those. Or I can get a caravansary card from anywhere along the row. Usually when you take the action, which is what I'm going to do, so we're going to see it, you're allowed to buy one of the cards with the camels on it or the one next to it. But I can choose anything at the moment. What I'm going to do is I am going to definitely grab a caravan card and I'm going to grab this green one over here. Now, they have different spices on them. I have now... I've now restricted myself to only being able to grab this green card. So what if, do I want the, the gray card instead? Now you want sets of different cards. So getting the same one isn't great points wise, but when you get your second of each type, you get a nice little bonus on it. This lets you place a soldier on a building because in years two and three, we're going to be attacked. And so we want to protect our buildings with walls or soldiers. This would let me pop a soldier down. Or this one would get me the bonus, letting me turn one of my buildings into generating a wild resource. I think I'm going to hold off on that now, just because I don't know where I'm going to generate that wild resource yet. So I'm going to grab this green one. So we slide these along and restock. Unfortunately, can't see any more green cards there. Although I want different cards. Why am I bothered about that? I only want two. 
Uh, so I could also gain a scroll. I could hang on to the camel, of course, but I could also gain a scroll, a favor, or a wild resource. So I am gonna. I should have already gained the teal resource. I am getting that. But would I like a scroll or another cube? I think let's let's go for a scroll. So I am taking the caravan action, and so I've told you you can only have the cards with the camels on. You do get the camel if you buy that card. So it. Another reason why maybe I should have gone for the, the grey there. But you can also buy the card that is next to the camel as well. And you can buy as many cards as you can afford to, but you can only spend one colour. They all have to be the same colour. Or, you know, wild counts as any colour, so that you can have white ones. So I'm going to buy this with my teal cube. So that goes back to the resources. I now have two of this card, so I can place a soldier out on the board. And... So placing a soldier protects that building from an attack uh, if it hasn't got a wall next to it. You get an influence if you protect one of your own, own buildings, or you get two influence if you protect someone else's. I think it's more expensive to build a gate, you know, one of these in the middle here. So I feel like I'm going to protect that one. I'll just get one influence for doing it. Oh, so do I want... Oh, I do want to get two influence because then... As soon as you get two influence, you can start to fulfill level one contracts. As soon as you get over here, you can now have two different spices in your caravan cards and then so on and so on, up to getting points. All the way along, you start getting favor instead of influence when you would go up this track. That's what I'm going to pick for now, though. It's the end of the round and the magistrate didn't pick up any camels. Neither did I and uh, neither did the magistrate, but they wouldn't need them. So he's going first and I pick the action row. So I am just going to pick this one to block the magistrate off. So the magistrate picks where the court is going to build. Hasn't got a choice. It's only one free space. And so it comes to me and I think I'm going to repeat my row because I would get two resources because I would I've put another building down and collect all the resources from my color. I could, of course, just come over here and I could have not put the cords here and then I could have come here and picked either yellow or black and got all of their resources and activated one of their buildings. But I think I'm going to try and get more of mine out on the board. And hmm, I think we could go to the library. I think that would be nice. So I am going to grab a building. I'm going to come over here. And I generate resources. I'm going to generate a beige. And an orange and then the action that I'm taking is the library over here now at the library you can give up resources either one resource gets you one scroll two different resources get you two scrolls so on up to four and so I am just going to spend both of the resources I just earned to gain scrolls because then I'll get myself a breakthrough so I spend those and grab two scrolls I've now reached two I've now reached three scrolls altogether, so I can look at the two breakthroughs, and these relate to all sorts of different actions, either the mosque, the palace, the marketplace, or the caravansary. And it basically gives you a one resource discount. Whatever you're doing there, one resource off, so you could get an extra free card over here, or it's cheaper to get resources at the marketplace. So I think I want to go for cards. I feel like I, I want to go for loads of sets of cards. So I'm leaning towards that. I do need to go to the marketplace, though, because there are no contracts that only need scrolls. They all need some kind of good. So, yeah, I don't think I'm going to go for... Although I've started on the mosque, maybe I want a discount going all the way up the mosque track. It's all really tempting. I think... I, I feel cards. I'm going to go for caravansary discount. So they go back. And then finally, it's the magistrate. What's he going to do? He wants to come to the library as well. He's gotten all jealous. So he can't go in the row with the most of his buildings. The most of the courtiers' buildings. There is a library action there. And it's a nice little connection up here for another one of his buildings. Although his decision isn't based on that. So he will come here. And he likes to be far back as well. So suits him fine. So he comes to the library. And based on the number of his buildings in that row, he'll do it that many times. And luckily for him, though, that just gets him one scroll. No breakthroughs for him yet. So it's the end of the round again. He doesn't have any camels. I doesn't have any camels and neither does the courtier. So we go again and it's me choosing the row again. So yeah, whatever. I want to choose one of his. 
Yeah, I want to. I want to stop him going for the one that's going to get him three actions. If he did, if he chose one of these actions, that is, and he's. We know that he's not going to do actually. He's not going to do any of those actions right now, because he's picked those three actions already. Hmm. He hasn't done wall. Maybe he's going to pick that and try and get an extra one in here. Wherever I pick, he is going to put the building in this column because I've got the most there, and he wants to stop me getting tons the same way I want to stop him getting tons. And I would like to go in this row so I can get three resources. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to put him there. So the magistrate would choose for him to put a building there to block me off a bit. And then I am going to choose this row. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, but I definitely want three resources. So I could go for mosque or palace. So palace would get me points in the scoring. Mosque, what, what could I do? I would get two teal and uh, a beige. So I could, oh, oh, two beige and a teal would be perfect. That would get me up two spots. It would get me up one spot and I would have a teal and a beige spare. Or I could go up the palace and they, you need, depending on which slot you're going in in the palace. So the first slot, you need one cube. If you're going in the second slot, you need two cubes. Third slot, you need three cubes. And the color of the cube depends on where you want to go in there to score points. So going in there for the cards, get me a couple of points. As long as you can, you need favor for each of your meeples when it comes down to the scoring. I don't think I want to do that yet, though, even though it would give me a, a bit of a variety in... It gave me a bit of a variety in the cubes that I had as well. But no, I'm going to go for the mosque. Yeah, let's do the mosque again. And I could, you know, you don't have to take the action. I could just gain favor and I could just deploy a soldier as the action. But which is tempting. But no, I want cubes. So I'm going to get two teal and I won't take the beige because I'm about to spend it, aren't I? So that is going to move me up the mosque track, which gives me a shiny bonus. So whichever building I put this on, I will generate a white resource in the future. For this kind of row here, this brilliant row, I probably don't want to generate two teal, so I'm kind of tempted to just put it there. It does mean, though, that I can't put a soldier there, so I would have to try and build something which I wasn't planning on doing. But the only building that I've really got that I can put a wall, a, a cheaper wall next to, you see the walls start off at one, two cubes, the gates, always three cubes. Maybe I'm going to build up to that, though. I have got two teal lying around, but then this soldier's wasted. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, let's go there. I'm just, I'm just... But I probably want to go in this column to build this column up more. I'm going to go here. Decided. It's done. Okay, so that's all of my stuff, isn't it? I've done the mosque. I've gone up. I've done the bonus with it. Yes. So it is time for us to reveal the magistrate's fourth action and it's the caravansary so oh yeah isn't going to go here because wants to do the caravan so where is it going to go here's got a caravan yeah the only the only place where it's allowed to build a building is uh, by going here so it will choose to do that so it's only got one building so it will get to do this once so for the, for the one card it priority is points and rather than the normal way of scoring uh, each pair of these is going to score three points, each pair of cinnamon three points, uh, and this one allows the bot to deploy a soldier, this one allows him to gain a favour, as well as the normal scoring for caravan cards. So for points in general, it will choose rightmost, so it's either the scoop or cinnamon, I think it, it goes for rightmost in case of a tie as well, so it will get that and the camel it was sitting on, and the camel you were sitting on. Uh, so yeah, that's it for the bot so that's the end of the round and i believe there's going to be a scoring in a minute we do the round end as normal though so no camels for the courtier i don't have any camels and the magistrate does not need to spend any camels so i am probably not getting my lovely row hey that's the way it goes sometimes you would have the invasion phase right now but we don't have that in the first year so we skip straight to scoring so scoring First of all, your meeples in the palace. Normally you need to spend a favor for each meeple. The magistrate doesn't need to do that. He's corrupt. He's got one good, he'll get one point. There is that point. Then we have bonus scoring for each of your buildings, score a point, and we each were able to build a building, so we each are gonna get four. So five to four now. If you have a scoring tile, you're gonna get points for each uh, matching building. 
that you've got for that action symbol, but nobody's got there yet. Uh, and if you've all gone all the way to the top of the mosque track, you get four points for each of your mosque action buildings. But no one's there yet. So we can move on to the second year. And I think I'm going to leave part one there. I am going to play the rest of the game. We're going to see the other two years. We're going to see all of the invasions and buildings being destroyed, walls being built probably. Uh, but yeah, walls are not going to be coming from the magistrate. Oh yeah, because one last little thing to show you. Uh, the magistrate now shuffles the four cards that he played. And basically, that's going to be his actions now. He is not going to do wall building and mosking. So you can get a sense of what he's going to go for and kind of worry because he's not going to contribute to the building of the walls to protect uh, our stuff. We'll see more of that in part two. You can join me there. There'll be a link in the description and at the end of the screen in a second. And remember, if you'd like to help me keep making playthroughs, the Patreon's there. If you just want to know what I think, there's a first impressions video coming up. And if you would like to see another game, there's over 400 playthroughs on the channel now. I'm sure you'll find something you like and I'll see you there. Bye, everyone.